Hello everybody and thank you very much for joining us today for this special webinar session. Um, this session is especially designed for our international offer holders joining us for the September 2021 intake for courses from our Hertfordshire Business School. The session is going to be recorded. It's nothing to worry about though. It's just in case anybody has connection problems today, we can share the recording after the session as well. Um, we'll just run through then our panellists for today. Um, you will notice there's a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Later on in the session, we will be going to Q&A. So if you do have any questions throughout, please post your question there. You can ask them anonymously if you like, and myself and the panellists will be able to answer them once we get to the Q&A section of the webinar. So today's panellists, you've got me, I'm Kat Fulton, I'm the International Marketing Officer. Um, we've also got my colleagues, Ellen Marriott, who's our direct Director of International Business Development, and Jess Hart, who's our Senior Conversion Officer in the International Office as well. And then special guests from the school, we've got Christine G, who's the School Admissions Manager, and also Joel Carton, who's our Associate Dean International and Postgraduate Student Experience. So you're in very good hands today, so any questions you have, we'll be able to answer them for you. Now, the format of today's session, we will give you a bit of an introduction to your school of study, just an idea of what to expect when you do join us in September. We'll also then give you a bit of an update on start of term preparation. We know there's a lot for you to think about this year with travel restrictions with COVID, so we'll give you a bit of an update on that as well. And then, as I've mentioned, we'll then move to the Q&A section of the webinar. So any questions that you do have throughout the session, use that button at the bottom of your screen, ask the questions there, and myself and colleagues will read them out and ask them to the panel live for you as well. Now, I'm going to pass to my colleagues, Joel and Christine now, um, who will be able to give you a bit of an update on your school of study. Well, welcome everybody. My name is Joel Carlton, as uh, Kat said, and, and my role within the Business School is as Associate Dean of two areas, international and postgraduate student experience. Um, but whatever level of study, if it's undergraduate or postgraduate, you're very welcome. And thank you for joining us today. And hopefully today can be an informative session uh, and let you know a little bit about the Business School and uh, and also um, your your arrival here in September. We're very much looking forward to seeing you. Um, and after the awful year we've all had with COVID, uh, even more so. Um, Kat, if you could advance the slide, that'd be great. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Hertfordshire Business School before my colleague Christine comes in and talks a little bit more about the programme specifically. Um, our mission in the Hertfordshire Business School is what we call transformation. Um, and what that means is taking your ambition, taking your dreams and your hopes and turning them into something to help you uh, move forward with your lives. And if there's ever been a better time to be in education, it is right now. These are strange and peculiar times that we're living in. But the fact that you're choosing to take a course in education and you're signed up to take a course in education now, I think is wonderful. Because if there's a, a good time to invest in yourself and invest in your future, it's right now, isn't it? So you've made a great choice already and I, and I congratulate you for that choice. I want to reassure you today that we will take good care of you and make sure you're supported from the day you arrive until the day you leave um, to make your dreams a reality at the Hertfordshire Business School. So when we talk about transforming students, it's with you on your journey uh, from applicant to student and then to alumni. Um, so the transformative agenda is, is very key to what we do, but, but what does that actually mean in practice? Well, I think it's been recognised. So to reassure you of that, we have a great reputation in the United Kingdom. We've been shortlisted twice for best business school in the United Kingdom for two years running from the Times Higher Education Awards, a very respected um, uh, award system. Uh, that you're probably familiar with and I'm sure you've all done your research already. So that's for 2019 and 2020. We've got a number of flexible business subject areas and, and you'll know already because you've signed up to one of those areas. So we've got a broad portfolio with one of the largest business schools in the UK with one of the most successful business schools in the UK and we measure our success on a number of different uh, platforms. First of all employability and you'll know from that 
uh, presentation that Kat just put on our employability is one of the best in England, um, but also for diversity. We're very pr uh, proud and pleased to have such a diverse staff and student body, uh, which makes us a very international school. And we believe our international network is really what sets us apart from many business schools in the United Kingdom and indeed around the world. 20% um, of our students, as a slide says, comes from overseas. So you will make contacts with colleagues who will become your networks for the future and it will become your networks for success as you move forward. And we have such a great relationship with our alumni who give back uh, to the school in terms of uh, for talks, but also in terms of placements and experiences and other opportunities they give back to their juniors. Uh, and I'm sure when you come to graduate yourself that you will be in that position and will welcome that contribution. So we're a family at Hertfordshire Business School or HBS as we call ourselves. Um, we are, as I say, one of the largest business schools in the United Kingdom, and that looks like around a million hours of transformative student learning. So uh, we've been in business a long time. We know about business and we also deliver at scale um, and on a number of metrics in terms of success we deliver. Um, so welcome to our family in September 2021. Um, can you advance the slide, please? So. How do we make uh, all of this transformation happen? How do we enable your success? Well, obviously you need facilities for that to happen, not just warm words. So we have a very international, diverse, respected faculty. Some of the academics you have will be some of the leading academics in the world, in your particular subject area, and uh, are all about supporting you to help you achieve your dreams and your ambitions. But supporting all of that, we have the facilities and the resources, um, the hardware, if you like, to make that happen. And you've got some images there of the new enterprise hub, which has been built just next to the business school, actually. Um, and you will make use of as well uh, as, as a school of uh, as a business school student. Um, so that's just newly built just before the pandemic, actually, where it went up. Uh, and it is the enterprise hub where we link through with local businesses and, uh, and those enterprises in the region. And in fact, we're part of what's called a university enterprise zone. So regionally, we're acknowledged as being an expert in enterprise and in entrepreneurship as well. So if you have an ambition for setting up your own business perhaps, or working in your own business after you graduate, you'll find that you have a good network already uh, and a family of experts who will be happy to advise you uh, and take that forward if that's your ambition. Otherwise, it will certainly help inform your study and your understanding of business, which is obviously what we're about in the business school as well. So you'll see there we have um, lots of different ways to support entrepreneurs uh, in the region, which may help you with your coursework or your ideas for your own business in what we call an incubation facility, uh, as, we, as uh, business ideas grow from an idea to an actual business and all sorts of things to help support that, including meeting rooms and engagement spaces that uh, really makes uh, life a lot easier for you uh, as you set out from being a student into the world of work uh, and to also uh, network with those people who will help you in the future. If you advance the slide, please, Kat. So at this point now, I'm going to pass over to my colleague, Christine G. And Christine is a school admissions manager and will take forward the rest of this presentation for the business school. So from me, thank you very much. I'll see you in the Q&A. Thank you, Jill. It gives me a great pleasure to join you all today to share with you some more of the things that we can offer you um, as a student when you join us at the business school. Uh, so first of all, starting off, we feel we have some really excellent connections. Of course, you already know that we are a very short distance from London. Um, so that's a great opportunity on the social and cultural side. But in terms of uh, the, uh, the, the business school itself, um, we are very fortunate to have some long-standing collaborations with uh, leading businesses. We're actually based on um, what, we, what is called the Havenland Campus, and that's, that's on a, a business park. And uh, many of the local business organizations are amongst the biggest in the country. 
Um, they attend networking events, which are open to you. They contribute to guest lectures and they attend careers fairs. Um, our connections are many and varied. They include organizations like Tesco, Ocado, Canada Life, Santander, uh, British Telecom, just to name but a few. Um, it's also very important to us that um, you as a student have, uh, have experience of applying your knowledge because that's very important for employers in the future. So many of our courses include practical projects for uh, it, which, which are um, for real, real employers. And of course, we offer placements uh, to all of our undergraduate students. Uh, you can actually go uh, do, a, do a work placement, a year's work placement between the second and final year if you're on an undergraduate course. Um, and uh, we have many of our postgraduate courses now which also offer such opportunities. Um, so we're, we're really pleased that we can offer so many opportunities. Our career service also um, has a significant um, number of additional um, internships and opportunities that they, that they can offer you. Uh, we benefit from um, many of our lecturers, both visiting and uh, permanent, um, having industry experiences. And this really enriches our programs um, uh, so th there's a, w w this is something that's at the forefront of what we offer. Um, moving on to the student support you can expect. Well, as a university, we provide uh, an enormous range of support uh, uh, across your life. So including financial, emotional, mental and so forth. But in the business school, what we're very proud of is um, the support we can give for academic skills. And we have uh, a unit which is dedicated to that called our Centre for Academic Skills Enhancement, CASE for short. And uh, that, that unit supports all of our students, whether home or international, across all of their studies. So they support students in numeracy, assessment and feedback, presentation, academic writing, revision, and many other things. They have fantastic online uh, resources, but they also offer uh, group sessions, one-to-one uh, -one, uh, and drop-ins, um, and uh, of particular use to international students is their, is their academic English for business uh, program which uh, supports all international students but in particular um, they that it is embedded in across the whole of two of our postgraduate programs international business and management and also in a number of key undergraduate modules but there is this bespoke uh, support for our international students whose first language is not English and interestingly so many of our home students take advantage of it. I must emphasize the Centre for Academic Skills Enhancement, its mission is not just to support perhaps those who are struggling, it is there for everybody to help you uh, gain the best possible degree classification or, or grade at the end of your studies. And things like uh, joining in on the academic English um, for, for business, uh, we have real results from that, which show that it has a very positive impact for our students. And it's great to be able to share with you also that we offer on our undergraduate programme, uh, the opportunity in most across most of our subject areas to combine a subject with uh, a language minor so we offer french german japanese mandarin and spanish um, all from beginners level uh, and french and spanish uh, from advanced level um, everything else is offered at intermediate level as well. Um, I have to say, word of warning, if you are absolutely fluent in a particular language, then we wouldn't be able to take you on that. But of course, what a wonderful thing to add 
to your portfolio of skills um, is a language. Uh, if many of you will be bilingual at least already, add some more and it really makes you stand, add another language, it really makes you stand out from the crowd when you're applying for, for jobs at the end of the day. Um, so um, I'm going to, we're going to pass over to the video uh, uh, shortly for undergraduate study. And Kaylee here um, is, uh, has just graduated uh, in accounting with French. And I think she's gonna to touch on one or two of the things that I've talked about as well. So hand over to Kaylee for the moment. So there was actually quite a few factors as to why I wanted to come to this university specifically. Um, first off, because I could do French alongside my accounting degree, so I have the opportunity to do the language that I wanted to continue doing, as well as doing the accounting, which is the career path that I want to take. Secondly, you get a lot of exemptions with your professional body doing this degree. Finally, I came to an open day and everyone was actually really friendly compared to other universities that I'd actually visited and that sort of made my mind up. In your first year you start off covering all the basics so even if you've never done any type of accounting before you build your knowledge up from the basics. In your second year it splits off into more specifics and then in your third year you advance on what knowledge you've built up over the past two years so you don't necessarily need any prior like knowledge of accounting as such to do accounting. You just kind of need to know what it is um, and why you want to do it. But the course, like it helps you build your professionalism for going into the real world. It's more tailored towards like a professional environment rather than an academic environment. All of my lecturers are chartered accountants. So they've either an academic or they have been in the industry they know what a company is looking for when they see a cv in terms of like other help that you can get the lecturers are literally more than happy to help you at any point um you can email any of them arrange a time to go to the office to see them and they will do their utmost best to help you understand what you don't understand since day one i remember not being overly confident i just moved to a different part of the country didn't really know my surroundings at all whereas now i'd quite happily like hop on a train go into london on my own do anything on my own like talk to a lot of people without really being bothered about it um in terms of skills, um, definitely IT skills. My IT skills were not particularly strong when I started. I'm hoping that eventually I get a job in audit um, with an auditor's company as such. Um, it doesn't have to be one of the big four, just some, just like I'd prefer to go into external audit rather than working in management accounting. Um, I am hoping to do a year out in France, essentially a gap year as such, being an English assistant in the north of France. So hoping to do that before I jump into the corporate world. Thank you, Kaylee. Um, and it's uh, just to share with you, Kaylee actually was um, one of our student ambassadors, and that's a role that uh, you can have, and it's a paid role, and uh, it might involve all sorts of things to support the business school and the university, and she has helped us um, uh, greatly on our open days, so she benefited herself and the open day persuaded her to come to university and she now has, has in recent years been helping us with that so that's a that's a really nice thing to be able to do okay so now just to move on to talk a little bit about our accreditations and career prospects you can see uh, we have a, a number of uh, well-respected uh, professional accreditations there. And that is just a small number. If you come to, to the business school itself, you'll see a great big uh, 
uh, plaque area on, on one of our walls and, and we have many, many affiliations there. Um, so just to pick out a couple of those, we have EPAS accreditation. Now, what does that mean? Um, it's an accreditation from the European Fund for Management Development. And uh, basically they come to the institution and they look at uh, the courses that you're having accredited under a microscope. Um, our uh, BA in International Business has that accreditation and it means that they have looked at the calibre of the staff, they've looked at the facilities, they also look for the international flavour of that particular programme. But in looking at the how that programme is delivered, uh, they really uh, expect very high standards. And of course, as we're, we share those facilities and staff across all of our programmes, it also says a great deal about the business school. Um, we also have a, a, a really good arrangement with the Chartered Institute of Marketing. If you study on the BA Honours in Marketing, uh, you will find that many of the modules or a number of the modules help prepare you for the professional CIM qualifications, starting with the first year module, um, one of our introductory marketing modules, which actually prepares you specifically for um, a particular uh, professional qualification there, but that is threaded through the whole of the, that degree programme. Um, we also, uh, for our um, students who are on our um, MA in Human Resource Management, they, as students on that programme, uh, are entitled to be associate members of the Chartered in Institute of Personnel and Development. And um, on completion of the course, uh, along with additional uh, work experience, uh, they can become a full chartered CIPD member. Um, so that just gives you a flavour. Um, obviously, our graduates have, have gone on to work for many, many different employers, including many well-known blue chip employers. And you can see just a number of uh, companies there that our students have gone on to work for. Um, I think it's worth mentioning that uh, those many of those students who uh, do an undergraduate work placement uh, offered a job on graduation with their work placement employer. So, uh, and, and fair to say, they don't always take it, but it's a great um, uh, boost to them and um, great to know that they, they do have that opportunity. And it says, it says a lot for that experience too. So, um, so that's something to bear in mind. And of course, uh, we're very fortunate uh, that our careers team um, are able to offer you three years of support uh, once you have completed your degree. Um, we will now finish with uh, the school presentation. So next slide, please. With a video clip from, 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 of some students for IMSC in business analysis and consultancy. For me, the MSc in Business Analysis and Consultancy was a perfect choice for many reasons. We are able to gain real-world experience and working with a real-world client. We were able to choose between different sectors, for example, IT, charity and retail. Additionally, we were supported by our academic supervisor over this 10-month period. So this gave us a perfect chance to have a good start in, in the real work life after the study. I have found the MSc Business Analysis and Consultancy Programme an excellent one. It's integrated and supportive. The support we get from the programme is excellent. The support given to international students, the alumni support, as well as business experts giving guest lectures on a regular basis are all reasons why I recommend the programme to prospective students. 
Another reason is the high employability rate that the program affords that puts our mind at rest for the future. I have chosen this program at University of Hertfordshire considering a good balance of hard and soft modules. I have a degree in mathematics and soft modules such as consultancy skills will help me advance my future. I would recommend this program to prospective students from both hard and soft background. Hello everyone, thank you very much Joel and Christine for giving us that introduction to business as well. Um, I can see some questions are coming through on the Q&A which is great. Um, we will be moving to the Q&A after this short update about preparing for the start of term. Um, now most of you will be at the stage where you've either paid your deposit or you're looking to pay your deposit shortly and you're clearing the rest of your conditions for your offer. Um, after that, you'll be either invited for a sponsorship interview if that's required, or you might be invited to do financial checks as well before our admissions team release your CAS for you. But once you have cleared all the conditions and requirements that they've set out, that's when we'll be able to send your CAS to you via email. Um, you can apply for accommodation once you've got your eight digit student ID and conditional offer. So you'll get an email once you're at that stage and then you can apply for the on campus accommodation. You'll actually get your offer of your room once your CAS is released to you as well, because that's when we know you're definitely coming. You've cleared all your conditions and the accommodation team will get back in touch to let you know which room out of your preferences they can offer you as well. Now preparing to travel to the UK. Um, we know things are a little bit different this year. There's a lot of things that you need to think about regarding travel uh, requirements, quarantine, COVID tests. I just wanted to reassure everybody we will be doing pre-departure webinars similar to this one and we'll be running those throughout mid-July up until about mid-September. We will be sending you an email just to invite you to book a slot on those as well. And we'll, go in, we'll be going into a lot more detail about things you need to prepare for the start of term. So uh, your quarantine requirements, how to order food when you're doing your quarantine, how you can get from the airport to on campus. So we will be going in a lot more detail about that. Uh, to accompany those webinars, we'll also be publishing our pre-arrival guide on our website. So this will just be full of useful information that you can keep checking back on as well, like packing checklists, um, where the location of the passenger locator form is, links to the government website as well, so you can check if your country is on the red list or not just before you travel. For those of you who are joining us from red list countries, you are still allowed to travel to the UK if you have got a student visa or you've got valid leave to enter or remain. So you can actually travel to the UK so that you can get registered for the start of your course. However, you must ensure that you book into the government approved quarantine hotels. Now, these are a set price. You have to book through the government approved links. Um, but included in the price, you'll get your transfers from the airport to the hotel, any security that you need while you're at the hotel, um, your food while you're at the hotel, and also the COVID tests that you need to take on day two and day eight of being in the UK. Please make sure that you book into your hotel because if you don't and you're traveling from a red list country, you can risk a fine and you'll have to be going to the quarantine hotels anyway. So it's not worth it. Just make sure that you book in advance. Now, for those of you who are traveling from an amber list country, you can quarantine in your accommodation that you've arranged when you're in the UK. So if you are staying on campus, you can do your quarantine in your on-campus accommodation. If you're living off campus, you can do quarantine in your off campus accommodation. You will need to think about um, ordering your food ready to get you through the quarantine. And we'll be covering more about that in the pre departure webinars. But the on campus shop, for those of you staying on campus, that now offers delivery right up to your accommodation. And for those staying in off campus accommodation, local supermarkets offer a similar delivery service as well. And for those of you on Amberlist, you'll also need to book COVID tests before you travel so that you can take them on day two and day eight of being in the UK as well. 
Um, so accommodation booking, as we've mentioned, accommodation is available now to book. You'll be able to book it once you've got your student ID and conditional offer, and you'll get your room allocation once you're at CAD stage. When you do your accommodation preference form, you'll be able to pick your top three types of rooms that you prefer. The accommodation will always try and give you your preferred type of room but if for any reason that's not available they'll always try and give you your second or third choice as well um, and then once you're happy with the accommodation offer that's when you can pay the accommodation deposit to secure that room as well um, if you do want to live off campus which we wouldn't recommend, especially this year, just because we do have extra support networks available to you on campus, like our Dean of Students team and our wellbeing team. So if you do have to isolate at any point during your studies, it's a lot easier for them to get to you to help you and give you any support that you need. Um, but if you are staying off campus, please ensure that you do use PAL accredited landlords. What PAL is, it's actually a scheme that the university and the local council have set up just to make sure that properties advertised on the PAL website are all in a good state of repair. Um, the pictures that you see will match how the property looks and also all the facilities in the property like the oven, um, the washing machine, the fridge, they're all working and in good use as well. And any deposit that you've had to pay is held securely. So if you do want to stay off campus, Live as close as you can to the Hatfield area because that's going to save you commute costs. It means you'll only need to walk to your lectures, um, but do make sure that you're using PAL accredited landlords. Again, we'll cover more on that in our pre-departure webinars, um, but it is something to think about. And you can find the links on our website as well. So once you are in the UK, we will be doing the orientation and Freshers Week activities orientation this year it actually starts before the start of term so before freshers week and that's just a chance for you to get settled in start learning your way um, around the campus once you've completed your quarantine but also it's a chance to start making friends as well so for orientation week there will be a mixture of online and some in-person activities so if you are quarantining or even if you're in the hotel quarantine if you're coming from a red list country you'll be able to take part in these activities and start meeting other students at the university. So there'll be things like online quizzes, online com cooking competitions, online breakout rooms where you can start meeting people from your course or even from your country if you haven't traveled together. Um, there'll be lots going on. We will be releasing a schedule for that closer to the time as well. And that's all been designed by our Dean of Students team for you. Once you have finished your quarantine, you've done your two COVID tests, everything's come back clear, you'll actually be able to join in with normal in-person freshers as well. So at the minute, the UK government is keeping a close eye um, on COVID in the UK and slowly easing restrictions as we go and as they deem it's safe to do so. So at the moment, people are allowed to meet socially outside. Um, you're allowed to eat in restaurants as well, up to groups of six. Um, and you can also meet outside in larger groups as well. So freshers activities are being designed around those guidance as well for social distancing. Um, if things go to plan, it might be a case that social distancing is lifted in the UK, but we're just waiting for confirmation on that from the UK government as well. But even if social distancing isn't lifted, um, the Dean of Students team and the other teams at the university will make sure there's still some exciting events that you can take part in. Now, during Freshers, you'll be able to meet representatives from our students union team, and you'll also be able to meet representatives from the hundreds of clubs and societies we've got at the university. So if there's something that you're really interested in, you can join a society. It's a great way to make friends and meet people who've got the same interests as you. There's lots of different things from anime uh, to dance societies to religious groups. So something for everyone. If there is a particular thing that you're interested in, but a society doesn't already exist, you can speak to the students union team and they'll actually help you set up a society for that specific subject as well. We do have sports clubs at the university. At the minute, there's 28. There's something for all abilities. So whether you're a complete beginner or you have been doing a certain sport for a while, you can join a club and start practicing there. Sometimes we're able to represent the university at competitions against other unis as well. And as mentioned, there's chaplaincy and religious groups for you to join. 
And finally, we just want to reassure everyone again that the university has been working hard just to make a COVID secure campus. So what that means um, is there's increased cleaning across all our social and learning spaces. Um, there's also those food delivery options that I mentioned. So if you do have to isolate at any point during your studies, if you're staying on campus, the on-campus shop will actually deliver food to your accommodation door. You can use that through an app um, and we'll give you more guidance on how to don't download that as well in those pre-departure webinars. There's the support for anybody isolating. So the specialist wellbeing teams at the university, the Dean of Students teams, um, they're very aware that, you know, you come into the UK, it might be the first time you're in the UK for a lot of you. And it's, it's a big thing. It's a lot that you need to think about. And with you having to spend um, your first almost two weeks isolating or in quarantine, we're just making sure that there is that extra support there for you so you do feel like you're getting to join in with activities even though you might be having to stay in your room for a little bit. You'll see screen signs and hand sanitization stations around the campus. Um, this is just to remind everybody to keep distance if you're queuing for anything and um, use the hand sanitizers as you move around the common areas as well or if you're going into one of the restaurants or cafes also very excitingly um, so the vaccine for covid is currently being rolled out through the uk population moving through the age groups and calling up those who are most vulnerable as well um, currently it's just been rolled out so that anybody over the age of 18 can go for the vaccine as well when you apply for your student visa you'll also have to pay an nhs health surcharge this allows you to use the nhs as normal once you're spending your time in the uk so once you're enrolled at the university, you'll also be able to register at a GP in the UK. For those of you living on campus, we do have a GP on campus that you'll be able to register with. Once you're registered at a GP in the UK, you've paid your NHS health surcharge. You'll also go into the queue to get the vaccine on the NHS as well. So this is a great thing just to give you peace of mind for when you are moving about the campus, going to your lectures. Um, usually they'll either send you a letter or they'll send you a text letting you know that it's your time and you can now book for your vaccine too. Um, and because you'll have paid that NHS health surcharge, you'll be able to get that free of charge as well. Just to clarify, you don't have to have the vaccine in order to travel to the UK. We know that it's not available in all countries, it's not available to everybody at the minute. So it's not a requirement for you to have it before you travel. Um, you just need to make sure that you follow the quarantine and travel guidance for the country that you're coming from. So whether that's a red list country, amber list country, you need to make sure that you're booking into the hotels, completing the passenger locator form and also booking your COVID tests as well, just to make sure you don't get any fines. So what we'll do now, everyone, we'll move to the Q&A portion of this webinar. I can see some questions have been coming in and my colleagues have been answering them as we go as well, which is excellent. Um, if you do have any business specific questions, this is the perfect time to ask them now that we've got Joel and Christine in the room. So just use that Q&A so we can ask your questions out live, type your question and we'll, we'll ask them for you. Um, just to be mindful as well, we have answered quite a few already typed ones. So you might want to have a read through the ones that have already been answered just so that we don't risk asking the, the same ones twice. We've had lots of brilliant questions come through. Joel, I'm wondering if you can help with this one. Um, are there any requirements for a placement well, um, there are requirements in terms of you need to pass a certain uh, number of modules to move on to the placement route in the second year. Uh, and that does vary between programmes, but, but typically you need to pass all your modules at a certain grade. But if you've got a specific question about a particular uh, programme, then we'll be happy to answer those offline and, and sort of email you directly with that information. No problem. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. And I can see just talking about placements as well. Somebody's asked, is there any fee for placement? Um, so no, usually if you're doing your optional placement year as part of your undergraduate course, you won't be paying any fees for this year. So there won't be any tuition fees. Um, some placements might actually give you the opportunity to earn a salary as well. 
if you are doing a master's course that already has a placement integrated into it, um, then it'll just be the tuition fees that you'll pay for the course as well. So you won't be paying any additional surprise fees for the placement once you're already on the course. I've got another question here, Joe. I'm wondering if you can help us with. Um, so someone's saying, is the MSC Finance and Investment Banking course accredited by any professional body? Uh, and they're giving a few examples such as CFA or ACCA or any similar bodies. Um, well, I'm going to tap into Christine's expertise for this one, actually. But I do know that CFA materials are used as part of the teaching on that program. So uh, but over to Christine for a more informed answer. Right. I'm not sure how much more informed it is, but um, but I can, yes, I, I, I understand that's correct about the CFA material, Joel. I um, would say it's, uh, because it's financed investment banking, it is a rather different subject to accounting. So something like the ACCA would not be appropriate although if you had studied accounting and got ACCA qualifications and experience we might consider you as, a, as an entrant but um, it, it hasn't got any accreditations that way. I'm not aware of any specific additional accreditations but it's something I can check up on for you. Um, so yeah I, I think the main point is as Joel has said that CFA um, material is embedded in the programme. Just to sort of reassure folks, obviously, uh, Christine and I work across the school. The people who actually run the programme and that you'll deal with on a day to day basis, the experts are the programme leaders. So any very specific questions, we're happy to take back to those programme leaders and get a response to you. So just to reassure you of that, if you have anything specifically we can't respond to. That's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, I can see that there's quite a few questions coming through regarding um, red list countries and vaccination. So I'll quickly answer those as well. If you are fully vaccinated already from your home country, um, you do still need to complete the quarantine period required. Whether your country is in the red list, amber list, green list, you must still follow those quarantine requirements when you're traveling to the UK, even if you've been vaccinated. Regarding the red list um, hotel package costs, I know that a few of you are asking if the university can contribute anything to those costs. Um, unfortunately, not at the moment. If anything changes with that, we will let you know, but it would be up to yourselves as the student to cover those costs um, that you need to pay for when you're coming to the UK. Do keep an eye on the red list because the countries, the UK government is keeping a close eye on them. Some countries have been moving um, in and out of the green list or the red list. So check before you travel as to what, um, what traffic light system your country is in. Fantastic. Thank you, Kat. And um, I've got, yeah, there's so many questions coming in. It's brilliant. Thank you so much, everyone. I've got a really good, good question here. Christine, I'm wondering if you can help us with. And someone's just said, I've noticed with MSC management um, that it, it seems to be coursework based. Will there be any form of um, exams for each module as well? Um, could you give us a bit more detail about the assessment methods? I'm afraid that's something that we would have to refer back to Mary Simpson, the, the programme leader. Um, I am under the impression that, it, that there are no exams, but I would not want to state that publicly without checking with her first. Um, and, but what is nice to also to, to draw your attention to is that this is one of the programmes where you get the academic English for business embedded in all of your modules. So the staff from our Centre for Academic Skills Enhancement work alongside you in, uh, in making sense of the business vocabulary and producing um, well-framed assignments. So there is great support threaded through on that level as well. So great support in preparing for assessments generally on that programme. 
And I'd just add on the, the management program is also the pioneer of the peer assisted learning uh, system uh, where you get uh, more senior master's students helping those more junior master's students. And that all, all is part of the, the family of HBS helping each other out. So that really works very well and has always been something that our student feedback has been overwhelming in the support on that program in particular, all of our programs, but that one's a real pioneer. That sounds really interesting. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, I can see if um, we've had a few questions come through about the accreditations um, from the, the slideshow that we went through. Um, a few students just asking about if their course is showing an accreditation, um, what does that mean for them? How does it benefit them? And is there anything additionally that they then need to do um, for that accreditation? So Joel or Christine, I don't know if you could help with that. I can well, start on that, Joel. If yeah, go ahead. That's okay with you. Um, yes, I mean, for example, for the CIM, um, uh, the, the um, uh, module on that on the first year of, of uh, BA marketing um, covers all the material for a professional exam but you then uh, I believe you pay separately to take the professional exam it's not a huge fee but there is a fee associated with that so that gives you a, an example um, so usually you have to put yourself up for if it is certification of that sort you would have to put yourself forward for that um, uh, but there is support within the business school in doing that uh, so it, it, it's all very much integrated. Um, if uh, I, I imagine meant some of you um, will be applying for uh, our BA Accounting and Finance, and though not an accreditation as such, I expect those people would be interested in professional exemptions um, from, for example, the ACCA. And... Um, our, if you take our program, our, our accounting and finance program from the first year, you will, uh, as long as you choose the appropriate options, you will get the maximum nine exemptions uh, from the ACCA professional exams. Again, you have to put yourself forward for that. You have to um, apply for that but you will see on the on the ACCA website that if you have completed um, those particular uh, the, the right modules at, at the University of Hertfordshire you will get the, the, the nine um, at the current time you'll get the nine uh, exemptions so it depends upon the nature of the affiliation and the accreditation basically um, uh, so, so yeah that, that's that's where it stands. I hope Excellent. that answers the question. That's great. Thank you, Christine. So well worth doing, everybody. If you do need to do those extra steps to apply for it, it is definitely worth it. Fantastic. Just having a look for some more questions. Again, yeah. if, any, if anybody's got specific business related questions, please send them through. I can see that some of you are asking about updates on your personal application as well. Um, at the end of the, the slideshow, when we finish the Q&A section, I will be putting the details for our customer service team in the international office. So anybody who's asking something specific about their application, clearing conditions, um, you can get in touch with our customer service team, which the details I'll share at the end for you. Christine, I've got another question here I'm wondering if you can help us with. Uh, and someone's saying, in September, will the classes be face to face? Well, perhaps I could uh, answer that question. Uh, uh, well, we want to is the short answer to the question. Um, but obviously, we're, we have to obey the government regulations. I, and that uh, will mean that that will dictate what happens. We want to be back on campus. We desperately want to be back on campus and see students in, in real life rather than on Zoom all the time. Um, and in fact, uh, our MBA students are studying on campus for semester C right now. Um, so um, most of our programs are semester A to B. 
uh, so sort of run from September through to, the, to June time. There is the MBAs who continue studying uh, in semester C as well. So they're on campus now and they are doing a hybrid mode of delivery, which is a little bit on campus and a little bit online. Now, I'm not Boris Johnson, you may have noticed, so I don't know what the regulations are going to be from September, but my guess is probably uh, some on campus and some online. And I'm afraid I can't tell you the exact percentages because, again, we follow the government orders um, to the letter, obviously, uh, for health and safety reasons. Um, but we do want to be back on campus. We will be back on campus, God willing, um, and, you know, barring any, you know, uh, a crisis um we'll be back on campus and we'll look forward to seeing you very much then so sorry that's a bit of a waffly answer but i can't really be more precise than that at the moment no that's perfect thank you so much joel and we completely understand yeah we're just going with the flow and going with exact government guidelines as well thank you thank you joel and just to remind everyone you to complete stage two of registration that is going to be on campus this year. So you do still need to make your plans to get over to the UK, ready for any of those in-person sessions as well that you're timetabled in for. Um, I know some people are asking about the start date. You do need to check your specific offer letter because some courses might have a slightly different start date, um, but the general start date for everybody will be, I believe it's the 20, Monday the 27th of September, um, but do check your personal offer letter for your individual start date for your course. So I can see another question. Um, I've just had somebody asking about placement opportunities. They've asked in particular for the MSC Finance Investment Banking. Um, but Joel and Christine, I don't know if you know of any placements that previous students have gone on um, that you, you're allowed to give us a bit more information about or projects that they've done while they've been on placement. I'm afraid we'll have to refer, I think most sensibly have to refer that one back to George Katechos, the programme leader who can give much more detail. Yeah. No problem at all. So that um, student, I know it was an anonymous question, but if you send us an email at international at hearts.ac.uk with your details on, um, we'll be able to find out a bit more information for your specific course as well, for you can send that after the webinar. Christine, I'm wondering if you can help with this one, but if it needs to be referred to the programme leader, then that's fine as well. But the question is, uh, which module should I choose to achieve the CIM certificate? Um, I want to apply for the BA Honours in Business Administration. The, the actual module is the introductory marketing module in the first year, and it is a compulsory module. So uh, you don't have to do anything is the, is the short answer. That's brilliant, thank you. Perfect, and I know some people are asking about um, how do they find part-time jobs when they get to the UK as well. So yes, if you are coming over on your student visa, you can work up to 20 hours per week during term time. We do recommend you to stick to 15 hours per week just so you get a good study work balance because your, your studies need to take priority over any work that you do. Um, we do have a careers and employment team at the university, um, so they can actually help you with polishing up your CV, any interview practice as well. And there's also um, a special job system called Handshake that the university has that you can actually search for jobs on as well. But there are quite a few part time jobs close by. So in Hatfield Town, there's lots of shops and restaurants in the Galleria. Some students might have part time jobs there. Also, with the proximity to London, some may venture further afield, but you need to make sure that you take into account your commute costs for any part time job that you're looking at as well. Um, just make sure that it's not going to cost you too much for where you're traveling, especially because you need to make sure you've got plenty of time for your studies as well. And just to add on to the um, to the resources that Kat was talking about from the university, inside the business school, we have employability champions uh, who also help with your employability in terms of CVs and interviewing skills and, and the, the whole other range of activities. And that supports you of kind of on a more personalised basis, apart from the university resources, 
and we've got a champion called uh, Emma, a postgraduate who is who's magnificent, frankly, and also Ray and Izzy at uh, an undergraduate level. So whatever level of study you're coming in on, we've got lots of employability resources to help you. Excellent, really good. Thank you, Joel. So I think we've probably got time for one more question, um, just because we are approaching the hour now. Um, so I'm just having a look for any business related questions as well. Let's have a look. Oh, I've got potentially a question here. Um, are there placements within the MBA, specifically within the MBA digital marketing programme? Joel or Christine, I'm not sure if you can help with that one. Yeah, the MBA is not designed as a placement, um, as a placement program. We do have placement programs available. Um, and if you are, if you're looking at a placement program, then, then obviously in perhaps international business or one of the other programs might be more appropriate. And I don't know, Kat and Jess would have to advise on when you can switch the programs around, but that might be an idea uh, if that's what you're thinking of. The MBA is designed as a, as a, 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 a program without placement. Um, so just to add that in really. Excellent. Thank you, Joel. So, yeah, if anybody is thinking about um, wanting to switch the subject that they've got an offer for, you need to contact our admissions team as soon as possible because they'll need to see if you qualify for the other course, if it's got any additional requirements that you might not have had to complete for your original offer um, and see if they can change it, hopefully before you apply for your visa, because you, some students will change once they're at the university, but that process is a bit more complicated because we'll need to make sure it doesn't affect your visa um, and it'll need to be noted on there as well. But there, there is that option. You can discuss that with various teams once you get here. Um, if you start the course and you, you know, you find that you should have done a different course for your career goals. But if you are thinking about that now, this is the time to get in touch with the international admissions team. Um, what we'll do now then everybody, um, I know that a lot of you are asking sort of application related questions, just to remind everyone we do have some live Q&As coming up on our international Facebook and Instagram channels. The next one is tomorrow at 2pm uh, BST time, so you can join that Q&A, that's on uh, Instagram and you can speak to Gavin and Cayman and they'll be able to help you with any application related questions or CAS questions as well. We've also got our next Meet an International Student session. Um, that's on the 23rd at 11 a.m. BST. You'll be able to speak to Jane, who's joined us from Nigeria, and you can just hear about her experiences of coming to the UK and what it's been like for her to study at Hertfordshire as well. And then lastly, if anybody does have compliance questions that they need to answer, so things to do with um, your financial checks or your sponsorship interview or your visa application, we are running a special compliance Instagram live with Shiloni Gray, who's our international compliance officer. So you can also join that on the 29th of June at 4 p.m. BST as well. Um, and again, the contact details for our international office email address is international at hearts.ac.uk. You might find a lot of your questions are answered on our website pages. So have a read through those as well. There's lots of guidance on uh, visa FAQs, when you'll get your CAS letter, things like that. And you can call our team for anything urgently as well. Um, so I just wanted to say a massive thank you to our panellists today, Christine and Joel, um, Jess and Ellen for your help with answering all the questions. Um, myself and Jess will continue to answer a few questions for the next few minutes while I play the final video. Um, but my other panellists, please feel free to leave the session now if you like as well, because um, I know you might have other appointments that you've been booked on to, but it's been a pleasure having you today. And also thank you very much to all our offer holders who've been watching in the audience. We can't wait to welcome you in September to your course as well. Yeah, just to say thank you on behalf of Christine and I for inviting us uh, to today's presentation. Lovely to meet you all, uh, even though it is online, but we look forward very much indeed to, to seeing you in September on campus. You'll find me in the coffee shop most days, so if you like coffee, please join me for a coffee. 
uh, and maybe something sweet as well. Um, a real pleasure to, to, to meet up with you and I uh, hope the whole process of your application and coming to the UK works really smoothly. Just to say we work so closely with the international office. So if there are any specific questions that you've got, please uh, by all means direct them through and, and we'll be very happy to answer them in the school. So Christina didn't know if you had any last words. Thank you. Yeah, fantastic seeing you all. And really looking forward to welcoming you in September, should you decide to come to us, which I very much hope you will. And I hope that you've enjoyed um, and learned from the, the things that we've uh, shared with you today in the business school. Um, and I hope it all goes well with your continuing applications. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you all. Bye.